So here's our continuation of our uh, watercolor technique video. So I wanted to show you what they all looked like when they were dry. So each one of them I did on two different kinds of watercolor paper. The top one is the one that you got to see me actually do on the video. The bottom one is, as you can see, a more grainy texture of watercolor paper. It's also a little softer as far as fiber content, so it doesn't resist the paint so much. It absorbs it more, off, more uh, closely related to construction paper than watercolor paper. But I did want to show you how all of them came out. So I'm going to just go through each of the 10 techniques with you. This was the... Uh, painting with just the paint right on the dry paper. We just dipped the brush and went right in. You can see there's a little bit of a puddle right there where the paper had kind of buckled a bit and it's uh, where there was a little bit of a drip there and it stayed. This one saturated really quickly and the colors are lighter, you see. So then we did the wet on wet technique where we wet the paper and then dropped the paint right on. This paper did not let it bleed as much as this one that has the sizing on it and allows us to kind of let those colors blend and soften. So the next one, this is the one I really wanted to show you because of the bloom of the salt. Now I've scraped the dried salt off of it now, but this, uh, this is the watercolor that you saw me do. Look at the bloom. Those places where there's a spread of the paint, that is where the salt was. And it pushed the water into different areas. This is the other color, uh, watercolor paper. And you can see it's gotten light here. So that's a different look than what we got over here. So it's always a surprise and it's always fun to see what you get. That was the wet on wet with adding regular table salt. This is the same one, wet on wet, but we use rice as our texture. It works better on the paper that you watched me do rather than on this one where it really, the rice kernels just kind of absorbed a little bit of the color and left white spots. This one, you can actually see what looks like grains, but the rice is gone. There's nothing on there. It's just on the paper. Then this is the one where we added alcohol droplets. This is the one that really worked better, the one that you watched me do. You can see that the color was really pushed away from where we dropped the alcohol. This one you can tell, but not quite as much. So I'm gonna come over here, don't get seasick as I move. This one was the wax resist, where on this one I colored a kite and then I painted the sky right over it. This one, it again, it didn't, it absorbed quite a bit more. It didn't resist quite as much. And this one I just drew a flower on. So you can see this paper makes the difference. That was a wax resist. This was the sticker resist. And remember, I didn't have stickers, I used masking tape. Uh, you can try whatever you've got. I hope you have tried it. Um, this one, I had some other kind of artist tape and I just cut a little ribbon out of it, just the, cut a strip and then wiggled it around and made some ends. Um, it didn't stick as firmly onto the paper. So you see that it leaked a little bit under the edges. Um, so I like the masking tape better, even though it did leak a bit right here, it was more uh, successful at, at doing the masking job. They actually sell masking fluid if you really get into these things, but for your purposes, just whatever you've got around will work. Stickers are fine. This one was the plastic wrap. When we put lots of paint on the paper and then we crunched up the saran wrap and we laid it down and now that it's dry, you see the wrinkles uh, collected some of the paint and that's where it dried. And here's the one that I did on the other kind of paper. It doesn't really allow the water to saturate because it, it goes right into the paper really quickly. I don't mean saturate. I mean, it doesn't allow the water to sit in the wrinkles of the paper. It saturates into the paper very quickly. So we still got a, a nice look, but it's more of a wet on wet type of a thing. 
Here is the uh, paper towel, same thing that we did before, except instead of the saran wrap, we blotted it with the paper towel. And you can also use tissue paper if that's what you have. Um, paper towel seems to be something that's pretty reasonable that we mostly have in our homes. And this was the last one we did with the paint droplets and we blew them in different directions with the straw and we flipped it with the toothpick or the end of the straw also. That's a really fun project to do. So once again, here's our overview. The top row is what we did together. The bottom row I did separately so you could see the different effect you get with different kinds of paper. So it's not, and you'll get a different uh, effect even if you use different kinds of paints. So 10 very cool techniques. Interesting to try, you'll get other results depending on what kind of paper you use. And I hope that you enjoy experimenting with that. Have fun.